So this theory video is about demo reels, and in particular, what ought to go into a reel. Um, demo reels, one of the most common things that students ask about. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about them. I've seen an awful lot of demo reels in my time, uh, and I think I have a fair idea now of the kind of thing that should go in one. The reason I've got an image of Scar uh, here uh, on my first slide is this is a shot that I did on The Lion King. And this shot was on my demo reel for, for many years. Uh, and frankly, it's still on my demo reel, even though I don't really do 2D animation anymore. And the reason it's there is because it was a successful project. And if you're lucky enough to get on a successful project and you get a nice shot on that project, that's the holy grail of a demo reel. That's, that's what you want front and center on your reel. Now, your um, uh, dilemma is slightly different. You all have uh, you'll have created an awful lot of animation on this course. So the trick is going to be to refine um, the animation that you've done so far and put your best shots first. Best shot first, best shot last. Basically, a demo reel is a sales pitch. This is the uh, OxyClean guy. Anyone who's lived in the States knows the OxyClean guy. Um, basically, a demo reel is a, is a sales pitch for your professional talent. It's a, it's a showcase of your work, and it's vital that it's absolutely the best work that you can do. Um, this is a, uh, an image of a, uh, uh, a showreel done by Tracy Chung, who was one of my students over at Escape Studios, and she did a really lovely reel um, uh, at the end of the um, six-week course that we did over there. Uh, and um, uh, what she did was to string together, essentially, all the exercises that we had done in the course uh, and, and create a little, almost a, a short film uh, of her work. And that really became the model for all the demo reels that we did after that. Uh, stringing together the best shots from from the course and creating a single seamless uh, uh, demo reel. This is a shot that I did on uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, this big dragon gets gets sort of ripped out of the water by the sea serpent, tossed up in the air. The sea serpent catches it in its jaws and hurls it against a rock. It was very difficult to animate, but it looks really nice on my reel. That's the kind of shot you want on your reel. But the big thing, the key thing, is to uh, exclude anything that has mistakes in it. You don't want anything on your reel uh, that has any mistakes. Even small mistakes must be eliminated. Uh, it's very, very important. Even a student reel looks, needs to look pretty much perfect. Um, uh, a simple reel with no mistakes, excellent. Complicated reel with many mistakes, that is very bad. If your reel has mistakes, the person watching it will assume one of two things. Either you didn't notice the mistake, or you saw the mistake, but you didn't know how to fix it. Either way, your reel's in the bin. Now, I've got this uh, slide here of a clock telling time. Uh, <laughs> it's one set to noon and the other set to two o'clock. This is obviously the kind of thing you want to avoid. Uh, um, a reel free of mistakes is the single most important thing. Uh, we, we over at Escape, we 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 had uh, Matt Reese, who's one of the animation supervisors over at Ardman Animation, come in and give a talk to the students. And he said, which I thought was very memorable, he said, "You're only as good as the worst thing on your reel." That's another way of saying essentially the same thing. Um, keep it short. Thirty seconds is plenty, and that you it's much better that you have thirty seconds of really really good work than a minute of mediocre work. Uh, and frankly, people will make their mind up pretty quickly. You don't need more than 30 seconds of stuff. If you can make your audience laugh, that's great. If, you can, if you've got pantomime stuff that's funny uh, and will make people smile, that's excellent. After all, remember that you're giving a performance here. Uh, the whole idea is to entertain. That's what we do as animators. We are entertainers. We're like actors in a way. Um, uh, now, student exercises have a tendency to look the same because they are exercises. So, you know, in particular, the, the, the box lift, the heavy object lift, is a little bit of a cliche. Uh, but, you know, there are ways of making these things more fun. Um, you could make a parade, for example. This is the front page, the, the, the pencil test from the animator's survival kit. Um, and what Dad really did here was animate a parade. I mean, it's just a bunch of walk cycles, but he's done it in such a clever and inventive way that... It, it comes across as being very, very imaginative and original. So, like I said at the beginning, first shot, your best shot should go first, your second best shot goes last. Uh, first and final impressions are very, very important. Uh, another important thing is to only include your own work. 
Uh, if you must include, I don't recommend including work done by other people, but if you must include shots that were shared with other people, you've got to explain what bit you did. This is the Creative Commons symbol for uh, attribution. Um, you want to give credit where it's due. Uh, and you should have, a, at the end of the reel, you should also say, um, you know, what rigs you used and who did the rigs and, you know, uh, credit, credit all the people for the free rigs that they've so kindly provided for us. Here's an example of a real breakdown. A real breakdown can go at the back of your reel um, and it can say what it is that you've done, you know, uh, what you did on individual shots. And lots of people do this because, you know, if you've just done the lighting on a shot, if you're a, a, a professional lighter, you don't want to be claiming you did the animation. So a lot of professionals do a real breakdown. We're going to assume for now that everything you've done on the course is yours. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. Uh, but if you do do shared work, make sure you have a real breakdown so that the person looking at it knows exactly what they're looking at and what you did. Um, give credit where it's due. If you're using a free rig from Creative Crash, credit it. Always check the terms of the license. Make sure that you know that you're using something that actually is free to use. Now, formats. People often ask about formats. Um, when you're sending in a reel, uh, a quick time is good. I like quick times. They're very easy to make. Um, you can, you know, you can scrub through them frame by frame. Uh, it's also very important that you have a blog. You need a blog or a website with your reel on it. Your reel must be at YouTube and it should be at Vimeo as well. And really it should be at both. You want to be in many different places on the web as possible. You want to be very easy to find. If I'm in a position to recommend a student for a job, I don't want that student to have to send in their reel. That's very 20th century thinking. You want to be, it wants to be an instant link. I need to be able to tell the employer, here's their work, here's what they do, uh, here's a link to their website. Um, uh, and um, having your own blog, your own website, something that looks nice is very, very important. Aspect ratio. What aspect ratio should you uh, output at? Uh, 16 by 9 is the basic aspect ratio that we all use now, pretty much. That's a display resolution of could be 1024 by 576 or 1280 by 720. The, 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 the basically the important thing is the ratio. And it is now the standard UK broadcast. Chances are, if you look at your flat screen TV in your living room, this is it. It's 16 by 9. And it's also the most common aspect ratio for computer screens now. So 16 by 9 is the, is the format you should export. High res or low res. This is often a problem. Sometimes, you know, students will do, will do um, files that might be a gigabyte in size. That's not very helpful. Uh, if, you, if you give an employer a memory stick with a, with a quick time on it and it's a gigabyte, it's quite likely that their laptop can't play it. You shouldn't have anything that, or, or it will start dropping frames or be slow. Export, use quick, you can use QuickTime Pro, it's really great software to reduce the file size under the export options. And you, you want something that's a, you know, really a maximum of 100 to 200 megabytes, nothing more than that. But big, big, huge files are incredibly annoying. And it also suggests a certain technical uh, incompetence, frankly. Music. Now, do you need music? Well, you can have music on your, on your track, but uh, note that a lot of studios will turn the sound off when they watch your reel because they're just interested in the animation. If you do want music, um, you know, don't have the Carmina Burana. Don't have the soundtrack to Star Wars. Avoid cliches. You know, light jazz, I don't know. But it should be obscure. Uh, and you can go to the iTunes store for this stuff. But the, the problem is, you, if you upload a, 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 a video to YouTube and it's got copyrighted music on it, they're just going to remove it. Now, there is, there's a solution to this. Um, either you don't have music or you use royalty-free music. Um, so uh, there's a nice website here, www.seabreezecomputers.com sells uh, royalty-free music. So if you Google royalty-free music, that's music which won't violate YouTube copyright laws because what you don't want is to upload your demo reel and then have YouTube delete it because the music is copyrighted. It's incredibly tedious. If you're looking for cool music, remember uh, Shazam is a really nice little app that you can download for free on your iPhone. Uh, you can hold it up to the uh, radio and it will identify music tracks for you. What about a title card? Should you animate a title card? Absolutely. Um, you're a 3D animator. You should be able to animate your own 3D letters. And there's a tutorial next week showing you how to do that. Um, uh, uh, and really, it's just modeling. You're just modeling. You're just creating letters uh, and then animating them and lighting them. 
pretty straightforward stuff. I'll show you how to do that next week. Should you burn a DVD? Some employers still ask for DVDs. DVDs are pretty old fashioned stuff now. I don't like making them. The formatting is tricky. The playback is, playback is often unreliable. I don't particularly like doing it. If someone insists, then by all means, but you always want to enclose a quick time movie as a backup plan because sometimes, you know, you put the DVD in their DVD player and it doesn't work because the formatting has failed. Um, so always have a quick time movie as a, D, as, a, as a backup and know your audience. Now, if you're applying for a job on a Hobbit or on the Hobbit for say, you know, it's no use having a character animation reel. You've got to have dragons because that's what they're going to be looking for. If you're, if you're applying for a, a job on a visual effects movie, you've got to have creature work. If you're applying for a job at Pixar, it's got to be character stuff. So you've got to know, you, you've got to ask yourself when you go, when you apply, what is it that, 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 an, what the, the, the employer wants? What are they looking for? And I have three demo reels, and this is where it gets to be a lot of work. I've got a 2D reel, if I'm applying for a 2D animation job, which I haven't done in a long time, but there you go. A 3D reel, which would be for character animation, and then a visual effects reel, which would be more creature oriented. And you're basically recutting the reel to suit the audience, because you've got to know what the audience wants. If you're up for a games uh, job. It's no use sending in a character reel. Games animation isn't about character work. It's about motion mechanics, about behaviors, about, you know, run cycles, walk cycles, people dying. There's a big, big, big thing in games. So you've got to know your audience. So a games reel, for example, uh, uh, should have behavior cycles, run cycles, things that loop, uh, and, and realistic, uh, realistic actions. Now, how are you going to cut your reel together? Basically, if you're on a Mac, you should get to know Final Cut. You can get Final Cut Express, doesn't cost too much. I think it's about a hundred bucks or 200 bucks, something like that. Uh, or Premiere if you're on a PC. And you can get a 30 day free trial for Premiere. So if you, you know, if you don't want to pay the license, you can always trial it. There's some, uh, there's some free software out there as well, but uh, really you, you want to get, you, you, want, you want to learn to use either Final Cut or Premiere in order, and, and really you've got to learn those because as an animator, you kind of want to become skilled at editing or reasonably skilled at editing. Finally, you're going to have to batch render your frames. Um, and uh, there's a separate uh, technical video on, on, on batch rendering. Um, uh, but you basically, you're, you're rendering out your final animation as TIFF image files using Mental Ray. Typically, that's what you're doing. Um, and uh, ray trace shadows tend to cause less flickering, so I recommend them. How do you turn your final frames? Once you've rendered all these frames, how do you turn them into a movie file? Well, you can um, uh, import the TIFFs into QuickTime Pro uh, and then save it out as a QuickTime uh, uh, or, or export it as a QuickTime and then import that into Premiere or Final Cut. You can also import all the individual frames into Premiere and Final Cut, but that's kind of a hassle because you've got to drop all those frames individually into the timeline. So again, QuickTime Pro is um, very, very useful for this. Very, very good little piece of software, and it only costs about $30. So in conclusion, uh, and I've got Alan Sugar saying you were hired here, because that is that is our job. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you a demo reel that is good enough to get you hired. So you've got to have a good demo reel. You do want to keep it short. Make it funny if you can. You've got to know your audience. You really want to recut your demo reel every time you apply for a job uh, and put the work that you think they're looking for at the front of that. Uh, you want to only show your best work, uh, only show your work, and make sure there are no mistakes in it. Uh, so that is a general introduction to demo reels, um, and um, I hope that's helpful. That's a lot to take on board, but it is very, very important to get this bit right.